Hi, I'm Chef Najai Dickerson with the American Heart Association, and let's get cooking. Cooking Up Confidence, Skills in the Everyday Kitchen Cooking Series. Each session will feature food safety, cooking methods, cooking skills, food storage tips, and of course, nutrition. Today's recipe we're gonna do is gonna be chicken fajita using a dry heat cooking method. And we're gonna show you guys how to do knife skills. We're gonna keep it very basic. So you're gonna learn dice, you're gonna learn julienne, and you're gonna learn mince. Before we start cooking, let's go over some important food safety tips. First, we wanna talk about washing our hands. So you wanna make sure your hands are washed. You wanna take about 10 to 15 seconds to scrub them, but the whole process should take 20 seconds. You also wanna make sure you're using the right cutting board. So you wanna have a yellow, or if you're using a white cutting board, make sure that it's clean and sanitized prior to use, and cook your poultry internally to 165. All right, so today we're gonna to talk a little bit about knife skills, all right? So the first thing you have to have is a sharp knife, but please do not make an expensive knife. Buy one that you can fit, it feels comfortable in your hand. Me personally, I like to use these global knives, but um, that's just good, it's what's good in my hand. So you wanna get a good grip on your knife. Uh, you wanna stand nice and, nice and loose, okay? You don't wanna be really stiff and rigid. So you wanna stand nice and loose, nice and tall. Um, the first cut I'm gonna do is gonna be this small dice, or so a medium dice cut. All right, the way we would do this, you wanna, you wanna do your hands this way, it's called a claw method. You wanna take that, and you wanna go right through. And that's how you would dice a tomato. Now you wanna make sure they're somewhat the same size, you know, but don't pull your rulers out. Just, you know, just try to eyeball it, make sure it's somewhat the same. Okay. And that's a dice. So once you get this technique pretty much down packed, you'll be able to make the sizes larger or smaller, depending on what you want to do. All right? Now, when it comes down to honing your knife, not keeping it sharp, there's a difference. So honing your knife is what I'm doing here. Okay? Now you see us chefs on the, we can go a little faster, but that's kind of dangerous, right? So slow it down, and you can do this. It does the same thing. So that's honing your knife. All right? Make sure it's nice and, make sure it stays sharp. So it needs to be done with a knife that's already sharp. Keep that in mind. All right, so that's a small dice or a medium dice. We wanna make sure we get that taken care of. I'm gonna put these over here for now. All right. Now the next thing I'm gonna show you, next thing I'm gonna show you is how to do a julienne. Once you cut that, all right, we'll put it off to the side. You wanna keep that tail there. All right. That's how you know you're not you're not going off of off of your your knife skill. Now we want to take it two different ways. You can do a julienne here. So it's, ma it's mainly me touching the side of my knife and I'm gliding it just like that. Now you see I'm taking my wrist and I'm just moving back, nice and slow. All right, and then you have a nice julienne cut. That's what you want, right there. So these are really good. You can use these for sauteing, which we will today. Um, you wanna make sure they're somewhat uniform. That's very important. Okay. And that's your julienne cut. Now if you start to tear up, it's okay. Just keep going. It'll get, it'll get better. All right, so we're gonna talk about mincing garlic. Um, garlic mincing can be fun uh, if you do it the right way. It's a good technique to learn, uh, but because of convenience these days, you know, we can go to the store and already get them done for us, all right? So if you wanna go that route, that's perfectly fine. But I, I wanted to show you how to 
how to do this if you, if you can't get to the store, all right? Now, when you go in to find fresh garlic, uh, you want to get some that aren't really dark. Here, it shouldn't really be a dark color. It should be a little bit lighter, and it should smell, it should smell like garlic. It shouldn't smell um, rancid, okay? And you'll know when you put a next to your nose. It'll, it'll wake you up, trust me. All right, so you want to have two pieces of garlic like this to start to mince. Get your skin out of the way. First thing I like to do is just kind of push down lightly. Okay, push down lightly. And once you get that going, all right, you have that gold right there, right? Just get that gold. Peel that out. And, okay. Get that. Now, if you want, if you're worried about your hands smelling like garlic, definitely by all means get you some, get you some gloves, put those on. That'll help you out. Now, I'll go ahead and I'll smash one more time. Okay. And once you get it nice and flat, just go back. Use your claw method like we, like we spoke on earlier. Just go back and make it nice and nice and smooth. Okay. If you want to store these, you can store these in a little bit of oil in your refrigerator. That'll last a little while. Um, even a little bit of white wine, you can drop them in there too. That'll help preserve them. Uh, so, see the difference? So you got the store-bought ones and you have the ones you did fresh. So either one's available to you. Um, they both are awesome. You can find those in oil and you can find those in water. Okay, so now we gotta make this delicious salsa. You have to have a nice fresh salsa to go with fajitas. So, we're gonna take this, I'm gonna dice up one more, one more tomato, okay? Let's do a quick dice. And it's so easy to make. You can buy this store-bought, you know, you can if you have the time to make it at home, it's great, but if you don't, you can go and buy a store-bought and you can add a few things to it. All right, just take your time and use those new knife skills that I just showed you. All right. So it's all about us having confidence in the kitchen, knowing that we can use this chef knife and we're empowered to do it the right way. We have the skills we need. So now, something like salsa is nothing, nothing for us to take and knock out. Now, we're gonna use a dice here. So it's gonna be a little bit different than the julienne. So take it here. And we're gonna make some slits here, two slits. Nice and high. One here, and one here. Okay, well, I'm not gonna use all that, it's a lot of onion, so we won't use all that onion, all right? But we wanna keep that part intact or it'll fall everywhere, so you'll see what I'm saying in a minute. So now once you have those two slices together, go back and just make you a couple of slits there. Then, make you a couple that way. And now you have your onions, okay? So that's almost all your salsa, you're almost there. Now you gotta have your cilantro, okay? I love cilantro, so I'll probably go a little heavy, but that's okay, you can go fine with herbs. Herbs and things like that, you can add all you need. You're not really gonna do nothing but add more nutrition, okay? Now, as I'm going, you can see I'm moving my fingers back here, slowly. So I'm kind of crawling them back, let my thumb kind of guide me back. Okay. Now I have my cilantro, right? I have my garlic. Okay. Now you want to have a pepper, okay? So the peppers you might have, hot versus mild. So. You definitely don't have no gloves when you're using these, okay? I, I, trust me, I, le I learned that the hard way, okay? So you wanna go here, you wanna cut these right down the middle. Of course, with all produce, make sure it's pre-washed before you use it. So those seeds right there, they really get you now. You gotta be careful. So go ahead and pull those seeds out, okay? Now I just wanna take them and add. I won't even add a whole one because it's it's not very much salsa. But a jalapeno is a good, a good place to start as far as your heat. It's not too spicy, but 
has a lot of good flavor. Um, just use them sparingly. And if you get a couple of seeds in there, it's okay. Now, we have a fajita. We gotta have the onion and you gotta have the green pepper. So make sure you wash, wash it off and clean this off nice. I'm only gonna use a little bit for my salsa just because I like to have a little fresh crunch in there. I'm gonna do a julienne first. All right, and I'm gonna turn that julienne into a dice. Okay. So these new terms we're learning here, you can see how you can use them already. All right. Okay. And, that's, and you have your salsa. So now all we need to do is put it in a bowl. Okay. Once it's in the bowl, I have a little bit over here that I kind of added already. So I have some store-bought that you can mix with the fresh stuff. I mean, look at that, that's delicious. Now as far as storage, you don't want to store it in anything metal because metal can transfer to the uh, tomato paste or the tomato product. So you want to put this in something plastic when you store it in the fridge. And you need to store it, you know, store it pretty quickly. I say within an hour um, because, you know, microorganisms build quickly when they get in the fridge. So store it about 41 degrees, um, nothing higher. So anything 41 or below. And store it, you know, you have about three days about three days, and after that, you should discard it. Now, we get to start making this delicious dish, chicken fajita. So, you know, we start with a nice cut of lean chicken, um, which is gonna be a chicken breast here, right? We wanna make sure we season it really good. Um, we have some ethnic seasonings here, which are cumin, and I like jerk chicken. So, I add a little bit of jerk on there too, which is awesome. Um, jerk has a little bit of salt in it um, when you make it, but you want to have a little bit of pink, pink Himalayan if you can use that. So you want to make sure you add that to it, all right? You want to have some kind of separation between your hand and the chicken. You don't want to go messing with that chicken too much, okay? I've already cut my pan on. It's at a, I don't know, about a medium high heat. I'm going to add my avocado oil, which is a healthy fat. Okay, you know it's healthy because it does that. If it doesn't move, it's not something you want to use a lot of, okay? All right, now once you get that saute pan nice and hot, you're waiting for the ripple to come. I call it the ripple effect. And you'll start to see that ripple come, all right? Now I want to go ahead and add my chicken breast, season side down or presentation side down. Okay. There we go. Now, once that starts to cook on one side, it gives me the opportunity to go ahead and cook on the other side. All right, a little bit of cumin. Goes a long way. All right. Now, once I flip those over, that's when I'm gonna start adding my vegetables to it. So. Um, I have a little bit of bell pepper here. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that it's all cut up. All right. So I really enjoy these vegetables right here. So this is a good amount for, I don't know, I'll say about about oh, four, yeah, this is enough for about four people if you want to go by a quarter cup servings. So your lean protein should be no more than about four ounces, okay, for an adult. So you have about two portions of chicken here. I know it's a little small, but that's actually the size you're supposed to use. Um, so when you think about how much you're using now, just think you're going a little, you may be going a little bit heavier. So now I'm going to take this and just turn it over. Get you a nice browning there. Look at that. That's what you're looking for. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my pepper and my onion, okay? So while I'm doing that, 
I want to think about my garlic. So I'll add my garlic to me about minced garlic earlier. So take your minced garlic, add that to it. You do not want to add your garlic first. You want to make sure you have some liquid in that pan, which the vegetable is going to provide some liquid so the garlic doesn't burn. So you don't want to go in here cutting that chicken right away. All right. So to saute means to jump, okay? It literally, it literally means to jump. So if you look closely in the pan, you can see where the vegetables are starting to jump just a little bit. It doesn't mean you have to literally toss it. So while that's cooking, I want to talk about avocado. So when you go to the store, these can sometimes be different colors. So I like to get mine right when they're, you know, maybe dark brown and I'll take them home and use them. But you can get them when they're really green. But if you put them in a bag, store them away, like in a, in a cupboard or pantry, that will allow it time to go ahead and ripen more. All right, once you get that, this is a perfect texture for me because I like it when it's a little bit green, a little bit light green, and a little bit dark green. So that's my personal favorite. So I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna go cut straight through the middle and kind of just cut around it. Okay, and if you do that right, it should just twist and that seed can pop up. Some people say go in and chop it. I think it's kind of dangerous, so I just go pop it out like that. It still works the same. All right, once you get that out, take your spoon. Go in here and just pull it on out. No, nothing fancy. All right, do the same here. And you know you're getting close to your fajita being done because you don't hear you won't hear a whole lot anymore. You won't hear a lot, whole lot going on. Yeah, we're almost there. So when it comes to your proteins, you want to make sure. This is how you know it's done. So you want to go and uh, if you take your finger and take this pinky and go here, that'll be well done. So if you touch that chicken and it feels like that, it's well done. If you touch it like this and it's still soft, that means it's about medium or medium rare. You don't want medium rare chicken, you want well done chicken. So make sure you want to make sure you press it and it should give just a little bit, not a lot. Now to back that up, you can use a thermometer. You can go in, go to the thickest part and that's going to make sure it's nice and cooked through. Um, that'll be about 165, 170, okay? I like to say go 170 just to be safe. Now we wanna go ahead and take our avocado, smash that on in the inside, right? If it starts to get away from you, that's okay. Chunks are good too, right? Now we're gonna go ahead in and pull our, our chicken out that we let sit for a little bit first. I mean, that smells delicious over here, look at that. So we'll cut that in a second. But first we wanna get all these veggies in there. Nice veggies. All right, got a good char on it, that's what we want. Let's like that good char. Okay, oh man, look at that. So we'll take them and just put the veggies right on top there. I like to have more veggies than chicken, but that's me. Look at that. All right. Get your nice onions in there. All right, so once you have that, all you have to do now is just go in and get your chicken. And you just cut your chicken nice and thin. You know, thin is better. Get your nice thick. Nice thin pieces in there. Okay. Just gonna put those right on top. All right. That's what we're gonna do. Same here. Nice thin pieces. Now you see, I'm not losing a lot of my moisture. It's kind of staying in there. That's what you want to make sure you keep. All right. Same thing here, add my chicken right on top. 
Okay. And then once you get that part finished, you gotta have the salsa. So put your salsa right on top. And there you go. Heart healthy, delicious chicken fajita. My favorite. My all-time favorite. There you go. Enjoy.